James Portnow is a writer over at Extra Credits, and several years ago he shared his unedited experiences with crippling game addiction, or to be more appropriate, disordered gaming, and how he nearly failed out of college and definitely destroyed some of his interpersonal relationships. In the intro, he talked about how difficult it was to write about, and how he had written over a dozen different intros and paragraphs about it, and ended up tossing them all out. And you know what? I empathize with this a hell of a lot. And this script right now is my fourth attempt to write about this. I usually try to be academic and as objectively disconnected from what I'm talking about as I can, albeit with varying degrees of success, but how can I be disconnected from something I struggle with all the time? So fuck it. I'm going to talk about compulsive gaming, or disordered gaming, or if you're Fox News, dangerous and threatening game addiction, a subject that people outside the gaming community love to talk about without any real research or gamer perspectives, and something that we ourselves as gamers tend to avoid talking about too. I think there's a few reasons for this. For one, we're used to most attempts to put the negative aspects of our community under a microscope coming from outsiders who have an agenda. Mostly news outlets who need ratings and a sensational headline that sacrifices youth culture at the altar of viewership. We don't like the implication that games are innately harmful or damaging to us in any way, and you know, I get that. In fact, this is why the traditional models of addiction don't even work for gaming. Most initial studies on game addiction centered around time, played. Because that's an easy shorthand for addiction. How do you know someone's an alcoholic? They drink a lot. Of course, this isn't always true of all alcoholics, and this is especially not true of gaming. You can't just use the amount of hours a person spends playing video games a week as some sort of litmus test for addiction. For one thing, there's a lot of professional gamers, people in esports, bug testers, journalists, whatever the fuck I am, designers, but also there's the very important qualifier that makes a compulsion a compulsion. Having to do something versus wanting to. Like if you just play a lot of games and are emotionally satisfied and happy with your life, there's not really a problem. You just happen to be a happy, normal person who plays a lot of video games. The problem arises when it starts to negatively impact your life, or at least that's how it appears. And to get to the heart of what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you my own story of game addiction. I have multiple stories, of course, and my story is ongoing. My default thing to do when I'm stressed is to play video games, and it's never really all that helpful. It's not about decompression, it's about escape. But nothing will ever compare to college. My first year of college, I was essentially on my own, and I had hit my first major wave of severe depression I had ever experienced as an adult. It was devastating. My motivation was gone, I contemplated suicide, I felt lost, and I stopped going to class. Entirely. A week into the second semester, I just didn't go to class at all. I ate ramen, played World of Warcraft for 15 hours, showered sometimes, and just repeated the cycle every fucking day until the semester ended. I moved out and never went back. I spent the next year and a half in and out of mild to severe depression, and yeah, played World of Warcraft and ate. I got some jobs, but this was it, basically. Eventually, my mental illness did subside a bit, and I stopped playing WoW as much. I, I, I bet this sounds really familiar to a lot of you out there. In fact, it's almost identical to James's own story. And if I were 60 Minutes, the headline of this story would read, World of Warcraft linked to depression causes nation's youth to fail out of college. But honestly, that's not the case at all. I mentioned that the earliest studies into disordered gaming basically equated length of play with addiction, and since then, more nuanced approaches to looking at games have arisen, specifically studies that look at analyzing emotional and psychological satisfaction as a measurable element, and whether or not people are choosing to play games because they like them or are instead indulging in the behavior because they feel compelled to do so. These studies, while relatively new and relatively small and therefore not conclusive enough to draw any sort of meaningful links that can lead to clinical treatment are an incredibly promising way to look at games and how we play them. What these studies suggest is that it's not just the games themselves causing the compulsion, but rather they're just a symptom of something lacking in someone's life. Either autonomy, a sense of purpose, or maybe, like in my case, a state of mental illness. I just got over a depressive episode. Well, got over is a bit subjective. I'm better, but I'm not out of the woods yet. That's why I haven't made a video in over a week. I was taking time to de-stress. And during this week off, I played over a hundred hours of video games. Most of the time, I didn't even think about it. I just 
sat down, turned on Dark Souls, or the worst of them, Civ 5, and just played for hours. I wasn't really having fun, it was just something I was doing. The video games didn't make me depressed, but they weren't exactly making me feel better. But 100 hours? For some people, that's nothing. They play 100 hours a week, feel great, and nothing's wrong. Right now, there aren't a ton of studies on this, and even the most nuanced are small and inconclusive. It's unlikely we'll start to see major studies on the effect of gaming on our brains until I'm in a nursing home and video games have become a cultural norm. For now, we just have anecdotes like mine, and like James's, and probably like yours. What I can say with certainty is that we, as gamers, shouldn't allow the media to control this conversation. Our responses to allegations and criticisms of our medium tend to be reactionary, not proactive. That's to say, there's a moral panic, we rise to defend it, and never talk about it again, other than to say, ah, remember that one time they thought Mass Effect was porn, or isn't it funny they think the original Doom caused Columbine? The problem with not admitting that some of these problems exist in our community and talking about them openly is that we leave ourselves open to exploitation, not just by the media, but by developers too, who have a vested interest in finding ways to condition us to keep playing their games. And the more open we are to these conversations, the more equipped we'll be as humans and consumers to cry foul when we see it, and to protect one another when we can. Anyway, that's it. Have you experienced game addiction and compulsion before? What was it? Let me know. Did I miss anything? Tell me that too. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers!